you must have felt like a bit of a, a big name on campus though because you were actually related to one of the the hogwarts tutors there i mean how was it working with your granddad <laughs> so bizarre so bizarre Brilliant. Hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, all well, all well. Just uh, running around with the uh, with the puppy, etc. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. No, I mean, if if I had Willow as a dog, I would never do anything else ever. <laughs> that's a pretty good opening statement. Yeah, and it's hard to argue with that one, to be honest with you. Yeah, she uh, she delightfully fills the days. Yeah, I'm honoured that I've I've taken priority just for this next twenty minutes. I mean, if you'd like, I could, you could probably interview her. I think she may have a lot to say. Thank God you said that. Tom, get out the way. I knew this was a ruse. <laughs> I'll send her your love. You had the, the premiere for Burial yesterday. Yes. First things first, how's the old head doing? <laughs> Probably a lot better than um, the uh, the director last time I saw him. But uh, yeah, no, it was actually, it was really, it was a lovely mixture of both. It was, it was, we had that last night and we also had my, it was my, uh, one of my brother's birthday. So they were up there uh, along with my niece. So we went out for a rather, rather well, not tame, but um, a quite, quite reserved evening afterwards. So yeah, I'm feeling fine. <laughs> Are you just saying that because your team's on the call now? <laughs> no, she was there. To be fair, and also this is, this is the run up. Um, I'm well aware that this is the last eight shows that I've got left on the, um, on the play that I'm doing at the moment. So a fresh head, clean, you know, focused mind is the way to go for this week. I think. Well, I, I was going to say because obviously you got. Burial, which premiered yesterday, you're starring in 222 in London. Do you just get off on scaring people and making them feel horribly tense? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Well, I don't know, actually. I've never really thought about it like that. But um, I certainly enjoy seeing people um, on the edge of their seat. That's probably the best way to put it. And whether that's through, uh, through the theatre or through film, it's both equally... Um, Equally fun. <laughs> There's such a sinister glint in your eyes. You said that as well. <laughs> no, I'm a pussy cat. Don't be silly. You've done your fair share of World War Two movies. I'm assuming you're quite into that era. You've done this against the sun, the forgotten battle. But while you must like the genre, do you enjoy putting yourself through these horrible shooting regimes? I mean, they must be pretty brutal to film. I've certainly become a lot wiser to, you know, it's one thing when you read in the script that your character trudges through the mud uh, with a with a broken leg and and a gun wound. Uh, putting that stuff into practice is 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 obviously very difficult. It can be a lot harder than you'd envision. Um, so much of I think so much about burial, especially, is the 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 juxta, if you will, between the beauty of where they were. And, where they're shooting and and these you know wonderfully sort of desolate landscapes, but then match that with the horrendous scenarios and situations that these boys put themselves into. Um, I'm absolutely fascinated by by that era. Um, I think it's incredible that it was so recent. We're not talking like Julius Caesar and and you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We're talking less than a century ago. Um, so part of me wants to sort of honor literally probably my grandparents that were at half my age were were digging trenches and and, and fighting for liberty um match that with all these all these cool little tiny stories that about individuals that happened throughout it i find it astonishing that that we're still telling new stories from that era um so yeah ben ben parker when he sent me the script i thought it was another fresh um, story and approach to to, to uh, World War II. Um, and I mistakenly took a 20 minute Zoom call with him, which turned into a four hour conspiracy theory. <laughs> That's what this is gonna be. Don't don't think you're going easy. No, no, I've been, I, I know now not, not to go down the rabbit hole too far. But uh, yeah, that was, it was made it very, it made it very easy for me to say yes after hearing uh, his depth of knowledge and my sort of curiosity, but yeah. Certainly do. I do enjoy a good period war film. 
how do you go about keeping spirits up? Because as I said, like you're in a scene, you're wet, you're muddy, you've just been shot at. That must be so draining. It, it can be difficult, definitely. It can be difficult, um, certainly when your character might be going through something different to others around you. But essentially, it's a team effort. I mean, you mentioned um, Against the Sun um, with with Jake and, uh, and Garrett. And that was, the three of us on that were on a rigorous... Um, diet scheme where we had to lose as much weight as possible um and we were because we were all we were, we were weighed every morning in front of each other in our boxes uh there's my clip done <laughs> yeah luckily there was no photographic evidence of that actually there might be i don't know i'm sick at photoshop don't you worry the point was is that <laughs> is that you, you do feel like um a unit really and if you let one of you down from whining or, or complaining doesn't do anyone any good really um so i think it'd be very difficult if i was if it was by yourself but when you're with a band of brothers so to speak um it's it's a lot more um it's a lot more fun and morale morale is pretty high because it's not only just i mean it's even worse because you've got all these crew members that are trudging through the mud as well and they're going through all of that at the same time so um i think it's a case of dig deep and if you're not willing to sort of make the effort for the team then you probably don't belong on the uh, <laughs> on the set <laughs> so when you're not shooting these epic war films like burial you're becoming an official author like you've written a whole damn book beyond the wand yeah how do you go about shooting something like burial and writing a book at the same time i love your 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 tone of, of being surprised was similar to mine i can't i can't believe it either <laughs> I can't believe it either. No, I've been, um, I like being busy. I like being busy, idle hands and all that. Um, and the book's sort of been a slow progression for me. It's been really a cathartic and fun experience. It was never set out to sort of be a book, if that makes sense. Uh, I was very protective over the idea of not committing to having to release anything and be before seeing the end product and the, um, uh, people that I've been working with at Ebri have been really good at that. So it's only really we got to the end of it and I sort of put it together and looked at it and gone, bloody hell, there's a book here. There's a book here. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we told you, we told you. So it's it, I've sort of learned something my eggs a little bit there. But um, yeah, it's very, it's very, very exciting. It's been a long time coming. Um, and I've had a, a, a lot of, uh, well, I've been working with great people. That makes it a lot easier. Something like Burial or something, well, any film really but especially war films um i imagine if you're working with difficult people then the whole process becomes pretty pretty ugly but i've been lucky to avoid that i suppose now that you're an author you've signed on to all of the authory things like you've got <laughs> book tours book signings i mean are you ready i'm so worried like, i i get out of breath just blinking and you've got to do <laughs> actual work are you ready for all of this and daniel i appreciate your concern and it, I mean, I could need a right-hand man. I'm not sure how busy you are in October. Do you need someone to look after Willow during the book tour? <laughs> I'm afraid that position is taken by a few other people. All right, see you later. Bye, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> That's good while it lasted. See you later. <laughs> we had fun. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm not really. I mean, I am ready for it, but obviously I've got no expectations because I don't know what a book tour is or whether anyone really wants to read it <laughs> i just know i know that i'm 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 really proud of it and everyone that i've um had read it my family mostly because most of it or oh, a lot a large part of it is about my family um slagging off my brothers a lot <laughs> <laughs> it was about i've got three older brothers so it's about time i took a little revenge <laughs> but yeah other than that mate i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the um go with the flow really and 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 just try and embrace it and um sounds a bit cheesy but the book is sort of dedicated to the fans because they're the ones who got me here and they're the ones who I want to read it. Anyone else, I'm not particularly fast. <laughs> I am a huge fan of yours and I was wondering, you know how sometimes they like re-release books further down the line? Yeah. Is there a chance you'd maybe consider writing a chapter possibly about this interview, <laughs> adding that to a book one day? The Lost Chapters with Daniel and Tom. I mean, listen, let's never say never, mate. We probably should say never and just move on with it, shouldn't we? <laughs> well, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I just got a message from your publicist saying never. Yeah. <laughs>
it would be remiss of me not to touch on Harry Potter. Mm. What do fans shout at you in the streets? Um, what's the most common? I want to say um, scared of the ballet Potter. My father will hear about this. Or just Draco, I suppose, is another obvious one. Um, or po- yeah, Potter. You get a lot of people, which I really enjoy, by the way. I mean, I sort of started this idea of having a Potter challenge. In fact, let's hear yours, Daniel. Okay. Potter. Very good. I've got massive cheeks. I think it all stalls in there. Like I'll do that back in slow mo. Like Potter. <laughs> well, you got the gig. Don't worry. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, so I get a lot of requests to say that um, uh, and so forth. But it's 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 truly staggering the length of time that that these books and films have been so successful. But even more amazing to me is the scope of age. <laughs> like you get, I get. I get I get eight year olds, nine year olds who want me to say Potter, and I, and I still have a um, people that I grew up with. I'm I'm 34 now, so so my generation, and even the generation before that, it's really amazing and truly like humbling to see something that you did 20 years ago still be enjoyed by um, by so many so many young fans. My mum will be irate with me saying this, but I think she could be probably the best and worst Harry Potter fan there is because she watches them all religiously, but gets them the quote. She tries to read along with it and speak along with it, but she gets every quote wrong. She'll be like, my dad will be aware of this. No, nope, that was nowhere near right, Pam. Nowhere near right, God bless her. I think the rule of thumb is, yeah, keep your mouth, keep your mouth shut until you know it perfectly. But I do like, I do like the line swap though. That's not a bad, not a bad option. You are Draco. You are the best Draco I could have imagined. But you did originally audition for Harry and Ron beforehand. Where can I see these tapes? Have you got copies? It's so funny you asked that because I was at the um, I was at a cricket game yesterday for um, so David Holmes, the chap who played Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double as well as mine, um, who, who very sadly broke his neck on the uh, on the last film. He does a uh, a yearly cricket match, Slytherins versus Gryffindors. Um, and I don't think you need to ask who won. Legends. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Um, but he he's he's making this fantastic documentary at the moment. Anyway, he was talking about he recently went to the Warner Brothers like archives, some bunker warehouse. I don't know where apparently they have all of the treasures of everything that Warner's has ever touched. You know, they talked about um, Heath Ledger's Joker outfit, Batmobiles, and inevitably um, videos and tapes and recordings of stuff that we we had all done. So I imme- immediately said there must be a video in that in that archive of me with round glasses on, not too dissimilar to this, scar on the forehead, and yeah, oh, I'm murdering an, an audition for Harry. It must have been there somewhere. But no, the the short answer is Daniel, you can't see it. <laughs> oh. You just, you keep giving and then taking away with the other (laughs) other hand. I'd love to see it myself, honestly. Astonishingly, you were only on screen throughout that entire series for 31 minutes. That was Draco's entire runtime. So when you're not on screen, what are you as young kids doing in Hogwarts when the cameras aren't rolling? You and Emma and Rupert and the guys. Well, big kids, really, I suppose, larking larking about. It depends what age we were at, I think. I mean, Daniel, Rupert and Emma had the least amount of larking to do because the chances are that their faces were on camera. Um, whereas, you know, there were hundreds of background extras or background artists that we worked with over the years. And they actually, they kept the same ones largely throughout. So if we would, we were all friends to some, to some degree. I mean, sadly, the truth is the moment that we weren't being used on set, we were forced to go to muggle tuition. Oh no. Yeah, I know, it's depressing. In a huge uh, marquee. And um, so legally we had to do a lot of that, but um, but you know, the other, all the other usual stuff, we had a basketball court and we mucked around with this and that and got told off for health and, sec- health and safety for, I got told off by health and safety for bringing in skateboards and rollerblades and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, it's it's literally such, such a span of our lives, 10 years. So it's very, it's very difficult to sort of sum it up in one, um, one anecdote, but um, but we were very lucky that we were allowed pretty much just to be kids. <laughs> Didn't feel like work at all. You must have felt like a bit of a, a big name on campus, though, because you were actually related to one of the the Hogwarts tutors there. I mean, how was it working with your granddad? 
<laughs> so bizarre, so bizarre, brilliant. It was brilliant. It was fantastic. I mean, Grant, he's one. He's my hero, really. My Gramps. He's my a bit massive inspiration for me. Um, fiercely intelligent, but hugely appreciative of the arts. He loves. Um, he's a geophysicist, uh, and but he also does poetry and he does all sorts of other things like that. Um, it was very hilarious to see Chris Columbus's reaction to say, "Huh, this guy," and you, and you could see the uh, the cogs ticking. And uh, yeah, it was. I, it, we took it for granted at the time. I think it was, wasn't really much of a deal. But looking back at it now, knowing that knowing that my gramps was in it is um, it's pretty cool. We've mentioned the fans, so I want to speed through this as quick as possible. I asked some fans on Twitter what they'd like to ask you, and they came up with some deep deep, meaningful, insightful questions that honestly, I feel like Trevor McDonald right now doing this. So I'm going to pitch them to you and you just spit through and answer them if that's okay. You're the spitting image of Trevor. Has anyone ever told you that? Oh, honestly, I get it too much, if anything. You know how people shout Draco to you on the street? You get tre Trevor all the time. It's, it's annoying, if anything. It's the backwards hat, mate. <laughs> all right, sorry, go on, let's have it. Be gentle. At Little Trooper 89 asks, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate, no bits. Oh, good choice. Yeah. At M22 Martindale asks, if you and Draco were to ever meet each other, what do you think your interaction would be like? Limited. Um, what interaction would be like? I think we, we would not get on very well. I mean, yeah, I can't see us. The only thing that I have in common with Draco is his eye colour, I think. Other than that, we're, we're pretty much on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Emma Watson him and just one punch to the face. Go for it. <laughs> I'll leave that to Emma. At my Malfoy Git asks, are you planning to get another tattoo? If so, what would it be and where would you place it? <laughs> um, no plans to get one, but I never had plans before, really. They just sort of happened. Uh, I mean, we're, we're on my last, last week of this, of my first ever play. So maybe I'd get a... 22, 222 being the name of the play, maybe a 22 somewhere on my left buttock. Uh, okay, and again, I will want photographic evidence of that after this. Yes. Sorry, I don't make, I don't make the rules. Well, to clarify to your listeners, I am certainly Joe. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no plans as of yet, no. At Ron Malfoy asks, who's your favorite superhero? Uh, crikey. Um, the nurses of the NHS. I was expecting Spider-Man and just move swiftly on. That's a better answer. <laughs> yeah, them and everyone that works at Great Ormond Street Hospital. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, and then after that, Spider-Man. <laughs> very, very close. Very close. <laughs> uh, at T-Felt News ask, what's your favourite horror film? Favourite one is difficult. Favourite, I suppose. The one that really terrified me, and I don't know, this is not particularly a horror film, was it's an old Kevin Bacon film called Stir of Echoes. It's about this guy who sort of gets hypnotised and it unlocks a whole world of his, uh, of, of other darkness. But honestly, the Potters still terrify me. I can't look at, I can't look at a Death Eater in the face. Ugh. You do realise that's your job, don't you? Yeah, well, luckily they weren't there on the day, so... <laughs> And finally, at Johanna asks, and this one probably will make you weep. It's a deep one. Uh oh. What shower gel do you use? <sighs> I'm not at liberty to tell you. <laughs> um, something very, um, something very basic with limited uh, chemicals and a lack of plastic. But those are my uh, go-to's. <laughs> oh, and one more's just come in from at Daniel Merrifield. Can can I look after your dog Willow? Have a good one, mate. Good to speak to you. Okay, nice seeing you. 